Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the NYU Myers Alumni Association, I welcome you to tonight's Myers Marbles event. I'm Mary Gallagher. I'm the president of the Alumni Association. NYU Rory Myers College of Nursing is committed to producing lifelong learners who will excel in their nursing career and be recognized as leaders who keep patient-centered care and the health of the society uh, forefront in their values. Myers graduates hold positions of leadership in the profession, practicing in very diverse clinical, academic, and administrative settings. The Meyer Marvel series shines a light on some of our most prominent alumni that have influenced the nursing profession and continue to do so. Tonight, we are thrilled to speak with Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick. Dr. Fitzpatrick is the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy and Elizabeth Brooks Ford Professor of Nursing at the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. She was the Dean from 1982 through 1997 and is a Distinguished University Professor at Case Western Reserve. Dr. Fitzpatrick is widely published in nursing and healthcare literature with over 400 publications, including more than 85 books. She has received the AJN Book of the Year Award 22 times, has received numerous honors and awards. She is an elected fellow in the American Academy of Nursing since 1981, a fellow in the National Academies of Practice in 1996, which actually I just learned about by reading Dr. Joyce, Joyce's bio, and an honorary fellow of the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners from 2018. She received the Sigma Theta Tau International Elizabeth McMillian, McWilliams Miller Founders Award for Excellence in Nursing Research and the American Nurses Foundation Distinguished Contribution to Nursing Science Award for her sustained commitment and contributions to the development of the discipline in 2002. In 2014, Dr. Fitzpatrick was inducted into the Sigma Theta Tau International Research Hall of Fame. In 2016, she became a living legend by the American Academy of Nursing. And in 2018, she received the prestigious American Nurses Association Jesse M. Scott Award that recognizes leadership in demonstrating the interdependence between nursing education, practice, and research. In June 2019, she was awarded the International Council of Nurses and Florence Nightingale Foundation International Achievement Award, recognizing her contribution to advancing international nursing education through research, innovative conceptual models, and theory development. Tonight's program is going to be moderated <laughs> by Dr. Emerson A. And now I turn over to Emerson and Joyce. Thank you so much, Mary. And before we start, welcome to our conversation with a uh, living legend. And you heard the great introduction. And I see a lot of familiar faces in the room. Um, I'm very pleased that we all are here to really join and celebrate uh, Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick. Uh, so it's an honor to moderate this conversation. So I'm gonna get straight to the conversation, Joyce, if you don't mind. Um, we really would like to learn from you, um, as an alum of NYU Myers, how has that education contributed to your success, you know, in many fields, in nursing leadership, you know, in research, in practice? I know that's a lot of questions, but we really wanted to hear from you. How did it go? How did it all start here at Myers for you? Thank you very much, Emerson, and thank you, Mary, for the very kind introduction. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to see many, many colleagues from different walks of life, including some of my uh, classmates from NYU. So, Emerson, you asked about how did it all start? Well, my career really got jump-started at NYU. So I had already done several things because 
Believe it or not, I hope there are some undergraduate students with us this evening, but believe it or not, as an undergraduate student, I made a commitment to make a difference in nursing education. Now that was not at NYU, but I'll fast forward to my experience at NYU, knowing that I had made this commitment to advancing nursing education, I looked around the country and discovered that NYU was truly the top school of nursing preparing academics and scientists. There was no question that if I were going to become an academic and a leader in academic nursing, that NYU was the place to be and continues to be the place to be, I might add, because I know all of the stellar work that's currently being done. So I got a phone call. I had applied to be a PhD student at NYU and got a phone call from the then director of the Division of Nursing, Dr. Martha Rogers, who some of you have, may have heard her name. And Martha uh, said to me that she knew I had a background in community and they were desperate for somebody to teach community health nursing in the master's program. And so, you know, that was an extra bonus. I would have still gone to NYU as a PhD student, but to get to teach with the giants, and I mean the giants in nursing, like Martha Rogers and Florence Downs and Earlene McGriff and, and many, many others who I got to be colleagues with because I was on the faculty. So I learned about the value of nursing science and the value of expanding our discipline because of being at NYU. Uh, of course, I came with a background in teaching and also a background in community, in particular community mental health nursing. And I could expand on that because of the, the expertise of the faculty and the people I met. So I learned about nursing science. I learned about nursing research, nursing science, of course, from the guru, Martha Rogers, nursing research from the guru in research, Florence Downs, who later went on to become the editor of the journal Nursing Research. And I learned about education from early McGriff and how to develop educational programs. So those mentors were so key to my own development. I also learned how to be a better leader. And I'll tell you some stories about that. You know, I'm not generally a, uh, an outgoing person, but Martha would take us to the conventions as doctoral students, she would take us and she would introduce us to everybody she knew. So we got to know the giants, not just at NYU, but everywhere. So I got to meet, you know, Hildegard Pavlow, I got to meet Rosella Schlotfeld, and I learned from, I just absorbed all of that leadership that all of these women, and they were mostly women at that time, and just like, it was like osmosis, but I observed everything and chose my mentors very carefully, even after that through up till now. And so I recall um, when I finished NYU, I had to make a decision about wh what to do next. And you know, Martha clearly said to me, you need to go where you can learn more and learn from the giants in the field. And so I looked around, but the important thing is that she mentored me just as Florence mentored me and 
I learned, I think, how to be a mentor as well as how to be a leader. So I don't know, I rambled a bit there, Emerson, but I just wanted to get across how it, significant it was to have relationships with the leaders in the field of nursing, because we now know that leadership is about relationships and how we lead and how we teach others to lead is about developing relationships with the people we work with. So I learned that at NYU. Joyce, you can go on and we could listen to you. We will never tire of listening to you. Just want to make that very, very clear with everyone. As you are sharing these stories, mentioning the names, I could see smiles to those who have their videos on. And I'm quite sure each of these names they resonated to them and they have their own stories as well. So it's wonderful to hear these stories from you. But well, I'm sure some of us have lots of Martha stories. One of my favorite, of course, is that uh, the first year I was at NYU, I decided to get married and um, I didn't have any friends. So I asked Martha to be the witness at my wedding. So that's my claim to fame that Martha was the witness at my wedding and I was married under the arch in Washington Square Park because my husband said that the churches will be gone, but the arch will still be there. So it is still there. I love to go back and see the arch. Fantastic, another fantastic story. You may put your questions and comments in the chat while you're hearing and all these things are resonating to you, if you want to ask Joyce a question or a comment, please do put them on the, in the chat and we will go to them um, after our, our very short conversation. Well, Joyce I want to tell another leadership story. So, yes. so Martha said, you know, when I was trying to figure out what to do next, Martha said, go with the giants. And so I went to Wayne State University, which was then the top one of the top research funded schools of nursing in the country. And the reason I went there was because uh, Harriet Worley was there and she had started the first nursing research center. And I wanted to learn more about nursing research. Well, only to find out when I, show, uh, when I first arrived at Wayne State, she had just taken another job and gone somewhere else. But I called up Harriet and I said, Harriet, I want to learn everything you know about nursing research. And the beauty of our profession is that any of us can be connected to each other. Like we have a very open profession and a very open relationship with each other. So, you know, I learned then that as a, as a beginning leader in nursing academics, I could reach out to anybody in the field of nursing and get a yes. And because we're all eager to help each other and to build the science and the profession. So I went to Wayne State, I studied with Jean Johnson and Margreta Stiles who, you know, we're leaders in the profession and Virginia Cleland and on and on. But I just absorbed everything I could possibly absorb from mentors who were willing to mentor me and not just me, but, you know, many, many others. And so I've spent the last several years since then trying to make sure that I mentor everybody I come in contact with. So I'm sure I have a bit of a legacy of mentoring. And I, Emerson, I consider you one of those individuals I've mentored. I look at the room, Joyce, and I could identify many in the room who have learned so much from you, um, myself included. So it's wonderful to hear about your mentorship journey, Joyce, and we learned so much from you. If you have a message to all of us about giving back, about paying it forward now, what would that be um, to move forward the legacy that you have created for every single one of us? 
Well, I think we all have a responsibility to build our discipline and build our profession. And we, those of us who have been involved over the years, have to find the younger people to invest in because you are our future. Those of you uh, who are starting in your careers and those of you who are continuing in your careers, you are the future. We have to invest in you. And we, you know, one of the things I try to teach my students is we shouldn't talk about thinking outside the box. We should talk about the fact that there is no box. Within nursing, we have so much opportunity to change healthcare. You know, we have the majority of health professionals globally are nurses. We have 20 million nurses globally. If we together can mentor each other, we can change healthcare. There's nothing standing in our way except ourselves. And whatever we can do to invest our time and energy in mentoring each other and mentoring the younger generations, we have to do that. We have to think big. Um, we have to be persistent and passionate. And we have to do the hard work that it takes to help our profession to rise to the top. Thank you, Joyce. I just want to know one of the attendees' comments in the box, Roseanne said, a bit of legacy, probably millions of mentees interconnected with your legacy. So I see Roseanne in the room and really applauding and everyone else in the room really applauding you. So I'm looking at the time. I, I know we can have Joyce and we can have Joyce and we will not be tired of hearing from Joyce of their wonderful stories. But I'm going to ask you, Joyce, a final question um, that relates to your message. What is your message to alumni? Uh, many of them are here uh, from Myers as well as students. Um, some of them are here in this room and for us. Um, about what we need to pay attention to and what is your general message? Well, think big. Think big. We can do collectively, together, we can change the world of healthcare. Nurses can have the power if they embrace that power and we can make a difference locally. Of course, locally, we all need to invest in our own communities. Nationally, of course, we need to be on all the policy panels. We need to advocate. And globally, you know, we're a global community now. So think big, be passionate, be persistent be involved. Thank you, Joyce. We would be remiss if we don't ask you this question. We have a few minutes left. So again, if you have any questions, please do write them in the chat and um, I will ask them for Joyce. But we are wondering, since you've shared with us a great history of nursing, where do you see nursing, Joyce, moving forward? What is your vision of where nursing is going? My vision for nursing is that we become the global experts on healthcare through our leadership, through our relational leadership, that we build the connections with each other to become the global leaders in healthcare. There's no reason why WHO is not headed by a nurse. Think about it the World Health Organization. We are about health, and yet we're not at the table unless we move ourselves to the table. So final message, be there, be big, be bold. What a wonderful way to end our, our, Q, our, our chat. But again, it's still open for folks who have any questions at all to Joyce or any comments that you may have. 
to Joyce. Uh, this is the good thing about Zoom conversation because we all see each other and we could be as interactive as we can be. And there is this is an opportunity to really um, interact with Joyce and ask your questions or, or say any comments that you may have. And I guess I'm gonna break the law a little bit here. If you can unmute, if you wanna say something, go ahead and please do so. Well, I see so many people that I know and that I have learned from. So it's great to see you all. And I can tell you, uh, hi, Mary, Mary Siegel. We go back a long way, right, Mary? We go right, Mary. New days. Yeah, I have a question for you, Joyce. As you know, since I left Case Western Reserve uh, in 89, I've spent the rest of that career in global health nursing. And I've had, um, it's been a wonderful, experience. I really, it was a good place for me to end up. I was just wondering in your experience in education, how you have uh, grown that vision in the School of Nursing and the international uh, uh, unit that you have created there, that we created. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. well, as much as I um, possibly can, I have tried to infuse global health into every corner of every course. It's amazing how much more work there is to do though. Yes. Uh, but we, you know, it, it, it's a challenge for all of us yeah. to really think globally and integrate global health into everything because our curricula are still very tied to a model that we can change, you know, we're still focused on an illness model rather than a health model overall, I'm talking generally. So we can change that. Right. You know, nurses need to embrace global health. Yeah, I, I, I frequently try to give, uh, you know, seminars or lectures to nursing students to let them know that, you know, there's so much out there that they can do and what a difference they can make you know, that they don't have to stay at the ICU in their local town, but they can yeah. go. And it's amazing the change that one can make. It's really it's exciting. It is. It's wonderful you, know, you know, if we had 20 million nurses all working toward global health, what a difference we could make. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's good. Any Thank other you, questions, Mary. Emerson? Yeah. Any other questions from the group? Oh, I have one here from Celeste. Hello, Celeste. Wondering what Joyce's recommendations are to recruit new nurses to academia. Well, actually, Emerson and I and one of our other colleagues, uh, Laura Bai, wrote a book called 301 Careers in Nursing. I was at a meeting on Saturday with nurses who... Uh, we're talking about the challenge in recruiting new nurses. And I gave her a copy of the book because, you know, there are so many opportunities and we need to publicize the opportunities that are there in nursing. And so 301 careers, most people don't know that. And also, um, we need to reach out. You know, there are a lot of very, very bright uh, young people who have no idea what to do with their lives. And if they only knew what they could do through nursing, I think we could recruit more individuals into the profession. It's just such a wonderful profession. The stereotypes are strong, of course, and we can battle those stereotypes. We can talk about our careers and the potential, whether it's global and or local. Thank and you. I see Dr. Everett has her hand up. Okay, hi. Uh, hi. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit late because I just got home from our meeting in Cleveland, but uh, did you have a chance yet, uh, Joyce, to mention the Marion K. Shaughnessy Nursing Leadership Academy? Well, Emerson, by three board? Emerson mentioned it in his, in, and Mary mentioned it in the introduction, but we do have uh, key individuals on our global advisory board, including the president of the International Council of Nurses, Dr. Pamela Cipriano, and the former president, Dr. Shamian. 
So we're we're committed to um, global health and global nursing. So we would love all of you to be part of us and just like I'm part of NYU. Well, we have a number of uh, fellowships that we could we could share information about uh, for nurse leaders. There's an executive nurse uh, leaders fellowship called the Cold Iron Fellowship. Some of you may know about that. And another one is a, a, a postdoctorate um, fellowship called the Miller Fellowship uh, that uh, both of those fellowships are sponsored by the uh, Marion K. Shaughnessy Nurse Leadership Academy uh, for continuing education and professional growth and development. We'd love to talk to you about it. If you have any um, interest, uh, let us know. Thank you, Linda, for that. And I and I will uh, mention what Dr. Dillon says here, which is really to sum up, you know, how everyone feels in this room. Uh, what a chance to work with you, Joyce, thanking you for your leadership, for your vision and uh, uh, and your mentorship. So uh, many, many in the room here are, are indebted to to you. Um, any one final question for Joyce or comment? Mary Joy, put a question in the chat. Yes, let me read it. This is from um, Mary Joy Garcia Dia. As a global leader, can you share the most memorable moment in your nursing travels or your career? It's hard question, Joyce, because you got so many. Well, you know, I have to, I have to finish writing about my travels as a as a global nurse leader. Um, I saw Dr. Hayok Lee on the screen. Hayok and I had the opportunity to meet with the president of Malawi, and I remember that well. And we. Uh, we're able to share with him the opportunities for nursing. Uh, I believe it was my second visit to Malawi out of the three visits, but we were able to share with him the opportunities there were for changing healthcare through nursing. So that's uh, one memorable occasion, of course, Meeting with health ministers throughout the world, um, are, that experience is always memorable because you get a chance to talk to key policymakers about the future of nursing and the way in which nurses can help them to do their jobs. So, you know, I think we have to do both a bottom up from the community health workers and a top-down approach in our efforts to change the world. It's not going to happen just at the bottom and it's not going to happen just at the top, but we have to build those relationships with individuals delivering the care and individuals making the decisions about the policies that are going to affect the care. So I've always thought that the relationships need to be at all levels. And that's what we call relational leadership, right, Roseanne? I, I already put in the chat, you mentioned it's all about relationships amongst each other. Uh, and I already put in the chat, relational leadership. Now, remember, I'm a psychiatric nurse, and I learned from Hildegard Pavlau that all of nursing is about relationships. It's all about the nurse-patient relationship and the nurse-nurse relationship and the nurse-physician relationship. It's all about relationships. And for the leaders in the audience, the relationship of the leader with the workforce, it's um, its just as important. Without it, outcomes are not met. So we're doing a lot of work, a lot of uh, research on relational leadership. If anybody wants to be involved, just let us know. That's fantastic, Joyce. And if Joyce asks, please contact her because that is going to translate to really, really great outcomes. We all know that from experience. Joyce, if you have 
one final message to the group, to the folks in the audience before I turn it over back to, to Mary. Well, I think I've already taught you this, Everson. The answer to any question I ask you is always yes. That's that's a good way to end. Uh, and we thank you, Joyce. What a wonderful conversation. It's been so informal, so so really open. So really appreciate all your participation. So I'm going to turn it over to Mary right now. So thank you, Dr. Fitzpatrick. And thank you, Dr. Ah. It was such a, an enlightening thing. And, you know, tonight is about relationships. So one of my biggest thing is the relationship. So the Alumni Association is about relationships, our relationships with one another, our relationships with the school, with students coming up into the profession of all the different levels. New into the profession, those getting graduate degrees, and it's all about keeping those relationships. So this is a perfect example of relationship and leading. Um, my other big takeaway, of course, for me is to be there and to be bold. Um, but I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Later on this evening, you will get a survey. We ask and encourage that you complete that survey because this will help us for any future programming. So it's really appreciated. Our next alumni event is the Alumni and Families Weekend, which is the weekend of October 28th. We are having our nursing um, luncheon and awards that day. And actually Madeline Nagel will be our keynote speaker at the luncheon. So we hope you're able to join us. Any questions, any last minute comments? Again, thank you so much, Joyce. Really enjoyed the conversation tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Hello to everyone.